Yeah, all good. Yeah. <laughs> Doing well, thanks. Okay, Psalm 46, verse 10 it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Uh, and verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Right? Be still and know that I am God. So this being still is uh, seizing from all action or all activity. And uh, knowing is uh, experiencing the truth that he is God. Right? Be still and know that I am God. Um, so it means to comprehend. It is to know certainly. And uh, and uh, more importantly, experience. You know, it's not just knowledge, but it's experience. Experience the truth that I am God. So that what's that's what the Lord says. Be still and know that I am God. And if you read the verses before that, you know, verse eight or verse nine it says, "Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations on the earth. He makes wars. He talks about what God can do, and therefore it is." It seems to be like an exhortation for, for someone who's worrying, for someone who is agitated, for someone who is constantly, you know, fretting and and uh, and being anxious and thinking, okay, what shall I do? What shall I do now? You know, just uh, in worry and in, and in anxiety, to say that be still, you know, calm down, be still, um, don't be agitated, uh, and don't be in a flurry of activity. Be still and experience the truth. That I am God, right? So, uh, so that's the instruction and exhortation. So, whenever we we calm down, whenever we uh, cease from anxiety and uh, and worry and and uh, and activities related to that, and activities as an outcome of that, right? Many times we, you know, the source of our activity is 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 not really. You know, it's not really a good source. It's it's because of fear. It's because of anxiety, and uh, we are doing certain things, or we are stirred up to do certain things. So when we cease from that and come to a place of being still, acknowledging, you know, who God is, and the, the Lord says that, uh, you know, and experience the truth, uh, which means experience meaning, you know, maybe the love, the joy, the peace, uh, the power. And uh, and his voice, which calms everything, right? Calms the storm. Uh, be still and know that I am God, right? So let's let's pray. Father, we we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the exhortation from your word, Psalm forty six ten, uh, to be still and know that, Lord, that you are God. Yes, Master, we we just quieten ourselves today, Lord. We bring all. God, uh, uh, frantic activity or frantic thoughts, everything that that we might be not meditating on, oh God, uh, in, a, in a wrong way, God, we we bring that to a close. We bring that to an end. And uh, yes, Lord, so that we might know that you are God, that we might experience that you are God in all these circumstances that is that are causing us to react in certain ways in all these circumstances that are causing us to drawing us lord to to behave in certain ways to respond in certain ways to react in things god whether in uh, thought word or action god we pray may we experience the truth of who you are in all these circumstances even as we lord continue to be still and continue to know that you are god we thank you we give you all praise and glory in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, I just thought we'll have a quick quiz. Um, okay, not on the subject, but just a general quiz. Okay, so uh, I think most of you know. So if you can just uh, you can type in the answer in the uh, in the chat. Okay, so this is who said to whom. Okay, ready. Who said these words? Um, so you, I'm just asking you to type in. Okay, uh, the first answer which I get will be uh, so prophetically. You can even type in the answer <laughs> even before I pose the question. Okay, so here's the question: uh, Who said to whom? Okay, who said this and to whom? You can put it in the chat. Who 
who said this and to whom? Okay, the quick fingers win. Okay, no answers yet. Okay, king to Daniel. Okay, which king? <laughs> To David, okay, the king to Daniel, yes. So John Paul uh, is the first response, so that's good. Uh, so Jeshina is saying Nebuchadnezzar, no. But it's not Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, it's actually King Darius, the Mede. And uh, he tells uh, Daniel, okay, so that's in... Uh, uh, that's in so the, the question is uh, who said to whom you know your God whom you serve continually he will deliver you right so King Darius uh, tells Daniel and just before they seal the seal Daniel in the den with the lions okay okay one more okay ready um, this is an easy one okay so who said to whom? Indeed, now I know it's a testimony. No, there is no, sorry, uh, I think it should be, there's no God. Uh, one second, just correct that. No, there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Wow, Maimon to Elisha. Divya, fantastic. Okay, so Naaman, uh, commander of the king's army. So king of Syria. So he says, uh, please take a gift from your servant after he's healed of leprosy, right? OK. That's in Second Kings 5. OK, okay here's the, okay, this also should be fairly easy. Last one. OK, ready? OK, there we go. Men, is, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, etc., etc. So, Gamaliel uh, to the council. Yeah, excellent. So that's Gamaliel, the Pharisee, uh, was part of the council. So this is regarding Peter and John, right? So they are in the temple, like they've been uh, imprisoned. Now they are, they've come out. The angel has, uh, you know, set them free. They have come out. So. Yeah, this is actually uh, very fast typing. <laughs> good, good. Okay, I think that those are the only three questions I have. So maybe next class I can have some more. Okay. Yeah, that is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought you guys are now the third hour, so I don't know. Instead of diving right in, let's have some. Let's have a quiz. Okay. Okay, so uh, last class we were looking at um, uh, conquest of the mind, and um, yeah, you know, finally we were looking at uh, how our perspective uh, is very important, right? Uh, we were looking at uh, developing a mind, positive mindset, uh, despite uh, you know challenges, despite trials, despite problems, you no, know, which will which will always be there, right? So to develop a positive mindset despite all that, to look at problems as opportunities. Right. So, um, like a classic example is that of the twelve spies, and uh, they saw the same thing. They saw the same giants. They saw that they were. It's not like any different. They saw, you know, how powerful they were, and uh, uh, how big and tall and strong they were. They saw the same thing, but uh, in uh, with regard to Caleb and Joshua, the only thing that was different was that that the 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 word of God, the promise of God. That was fresh in their minds, so that seemed to have, you know, painted a bigger picture. Uh, that seemed to have um, a, a bearing on what reality was for them. Right. So, so they were not moved by or intimidated uh, by the uh, by the by the situation, by the circumstance. Right? Rather, they they saw the same things, but their mindset was actually framed or formed by the word of god the promise of god so which which far overshadowed um, the reality of the circumstance like what was actually happening so uh, for them it was like uh, you know the others were saying they are like we are like grasshoppers you know? but then they said 
you know they are like bread in the sense uh, you know we can eat them up you know we consume them so um, so that's it right so so we we saw that last class that's what we ended with right okay so today let's look at uh, uh, let's just continue to look at uh, that is the chap i mean the, the, uh, the eighth topic in the same uh, uh, subject um, about conquest of the mind you share the screen Okay, so that's about crucifying the flesh. Okay, uh, crucifying the flesh in the sense um, that we know as new creations, we have been crucified with Christ. Okay, um, so that is what we we see that as part of our identity as um, as new creations, this is also part of our identity. Okay, um, so. Romans 6, verse 3, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Okay, we look at verse 6, Romans 6, verse 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Okay, so this is what had happened. Then he goes on to say in verse 11, because you can read through the entire uh, chapter. Verse 11, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And it goes on to say, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, right? For sin shall not have dominion. So, uh, so, so the truth is that this is what happened to us, that our body of sin, uh, figuratively called as the old man, right? the old Adam or the old, you know, whoever you are, your name, you know, you're just saying, okay, the old man was crucified when Jesus was crucified on the cross. You know, that's the identification that happened, right? The substitute is as part of the substitution. In our place, he died, but the identification is that our old man was crucified with him. Okay, so when we say, uh, crucifying the flesh, we're talking about the evil desires or the inappropriate desires of the body and also the unrenewed part of our mind, right? So this is, which is referred to as the flesh over and over again in the New Testament. So we see that uh, that flesh, which was already crucified on the cross, now we, it needs to be a continuous thing, okay? Uh, it needs to be, uh, we need to reckon ourselves dead to sin. We need to reckon ourselves, which means come to that conclusion. And uh, that needs to be fresh in our mind. Okay. Because, uh, you know, in James, we saw that um, we we, were, we are drawn away by our desires. And this, these desires are desires of the flesh, which are unchecked, right? Which are, which are not... Uh, uh, kept uh, or which are not put to death right? we think about them we give life to them by meditating on them and they take over right? so um james was very clear that we are drawn away by our sinful desires these desires of the flesh so so what is the what is the answer in order to walk in wholesomeness in to walk in uh, healing and health for our emotions we need to reckon these desires to be dead. Okay, we need to come to that conclusion. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is what we see in First Peter two and verse eleven uh, says. Uh, Peter says that, beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. Abstain. Stay away from fleshly lusts. Okay. Or, in other words, don't give in to the draw of the fleshly lusts. Okay, don't give in. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Okay, there's a battle, and this is, it's a war, and it's a attack on your soul. So it's good to look at it that way. You know, this fleshly lust, which, uh, which seems very uh, uh, fascinating, okay, uh, if, if our mind is not renewed, that's how it's going to be. 
uh, because otherwise for a renewed mind it will seem uh, you know uh, it'll it'll seem unattractive because you don't want to displease god right but for a renewed for a renewed mind it's it seems active and so for us to consider that this drawing of the flesh this fleshly lust is actually an attack. okay it's an attack it's an internal attack it's an attack on our mind so whatever you know faculties that you have in our, in, in our, as part of our soul, where where it could be thinking, it could be analysis, it could be reasoning, uh, it could be creativity, imagination, you know, all those things. It's an attack on that. So we need to understand that it's an attack. Where, without our knowing, this fleshly lust when we give into, it attacks and uh, it it destroys and uh, there's a there, there is definitely, since it's a war, there is definitely uh, some kind of casualty you know, in the, all those areas. It attacks our soul. So when our attack, when our, when the attack is on our soul, and when, when our soul is damaged, right, then our actions are also damaged, right? Because actions fall, follow through. Our actions are also damaged, which means that you know our response uh, to people. Our, our, even our, even our work, our relationships, our relationship with God, relationship with people, relationships, relationships with people, relationship with God, everything, you know, gets, um, uh, gets tainted because of this attack, right? because of the damage of this attack. So fleshly lusts war against the soul. So it, it enables us to, you know, have a very different perspective. Of everything that seems to be drawing us, right? So it's, it's an attack. Okay. Then, uh, so giving in to these desires damages, harms our mind, our emotions, right? Everything. Uh, Galatians uh, talks gives a list. You know, Galatians five uh, all gives a list of the works of the flesh, okay, or the fruit or the end result of the work of the flesh. Right now, this is what it is. Now, the works or acts or deeds of the flesh are evident, which are adult adultery, fornication, sexual impurity, or you know, sex before the covenant of marriage, um, uncleanness, lewdness. You know, you see the list, and this is the works, or this is the end result, or a maturity of the works of the flesh. Right, idolatry, because it's about the self. Uh, idolatry could be in different forms. Sorcery, because there is there is the drawing to the dark side. You know, there is a spiritual hunger, but it's giving vent and uh, to different avenues. Right? Sorcery, witchcraft, magic, uh, hatred, and you know, contentions. So it's not uh, something that's holy and pure. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. Right, verse twenty-one talks about envy and murders and drunkenness, um, revelries and the like. Okay, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice these things or such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. And then he talks about the fruit of the spirit. Okay, so so this is the manifestation of the flesh, uh, a result of. The work of the flesh, and then he talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is which is totally contradictory to what we see there. You know, this is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control, and against such there is no law. Okay, so uh, so this fruit and uh, fruit of the spirit, this fruits. Of the flesh, okay. it's an outcome of something that's happening within, and uh, and that is what the next uh, topic is about. You know, it's about it's, it's an outcome of seeds. It's an outcome of where our roots are, and it's as a result of the seed and the root. It's it's it forms the fruit, right? It's an outcome of giving in. To the desires of the flesh, okay. and uh, 
like we said earlier, these damage us personally, um, and that that damage, you know, it just continues to erode on everything that we might have built up. Right? We pray in the spirit. We edify ourselves. We read the word of God, and um, you know, renew our mind to the word of God, and and so many good things happen. Right, to the believer as a result of engaging, encountering with God, engaging with the Holy Spirit and with the Word. So many good things happen. So many things are built up that we don't even realize it. And we realize it only when these things are uh, eroding or when these things have been taken away, right? damaged. So um, so the, the, the thing is this, that there is uh, a damage that happens when we give in to the Lust of the flesh. So these, so the importance of these, we reckon, uh, we need to reckon ourselves dead to these things. Okay. So the minute we, um, you know, face some kind of a suggestion, or uh, you know, there is some kind of a invitation uh, where we, we we sense that hey, there is a drawing to this thing. I know that it's not of God. I know that it's a thing of flesh. You know. We need to be alert and say, okay, this is damaging to me now. You know, this is unhealthy. This is damaging. This is going to, you know, for my mental health, uh, it is. It's not going to help. Okay, uh, it's not going to help in any way. So that's why, you know, when we see um, addictions, people who are, uh, you know, in in various forms of addictions, right? um, and and hardcore addictions. What is the thing that is messed up? Of course, their body, right? Of course, the body is messed up because, as a result of uh, abuse of whatever chemical or whatever, the body is messed up. But, but you will also see that the mind is really messed up. Okay, the mind is damaged, not able to think clearly, and uh, not able to say a definite no because the will is broken. Right. Uh, no to things that are that you know for very sure are damaging to yourself. And the mind gets um, so damaged to that extent where uh, it's just like clay, right? just in the hands of the enemy, right? being shaped and whatever the enemy wants to. So um, it's it's you know th that's the end result of it. So so we know that um, you know giving in to the flesh uh, damages, it right? destroys. So, uh, so we need to understand. Okay, am I sowing seeds? Am I sowing seeds, which actually result will result in these kinds of fruit, right? By my actions, by my uh, whatever, my attitude, my motives, am I sowing these kinds of seeds? Okay, if you look at the list again, right? Uh, Galatians five. Okay, what kind of seeds am I sowing which might lead to this fruit? Okay, it's, it's a good thing to reflect and see. Right? It's it's not a you know that verse 19, 20, 21. It's a you know it's an ugly <laughs> list. It's not a pretty list, right? And and when we look at these things, we are, we are like, oh wow, I'll never I'll never do that. You know, I, I I'm I'm not doing it. I'll I'll never end up in those kind of things. But to the best of us, you know, even for the best of us, even though we might have the best of intentions, right? If you're not actually careful, what kinds of seeds that we are sowing, right? What kinds of desires are we entertaining? Um, then, uh, you know, it is it is possible that these kinds of fruits, uh, you know, are what we will actually bear, right? So we need to we need to we need to ask ourselves: Am I am I sowing to the spirit, or am I sowing to the flesh? And because if I sow to the spirit, I will reap life. But if I sow to the flesh, then I will reap uh, death. And I will reap death. I will reap the consequence of it. And uh, and that's that's the thing. It's it's a matter of time, right? If I'm continuing to sow to the things of the flesh, um, then it's just a matter of time before things get out of hand and uh, you know and nobody will say you know, none of the uh, like somebody was saying like um, after after talking to prisoners who were there uh, who had committed you know great crimes and um, you know horrid crimes 
you know they are just normal people they didn't they didn't think that okay that they will end up like this they didn't they didn't definitely didn't want a life life like that but the fact is that they they continue to harbor you know these kinds of seeds right they continue to harbor these kinds of seeds and in a split moment they made that decision because you know it it, it was the seeds had borne fruit right? and things went out of hand right so yeah so we see that um the flu, the, the the seeds the roots result in fruit okay um so so what okay so so this refers to whatever things that that is that are there in the present so we can be um, um we can be uh, alert to those things and and we can actually alert alert to those sowing of those kinds of seeds so what we mean is like oh, those kind of desires those kind of thoughts those kind of temptations that we don't entertain that knowing fully well that if i'm going to you know i'm not given in to the act or given in to the deed but i'm somewhere in the corner i'm still entertaining that thought you know entertaining that suggestion um then we need to be aware that that is going to lead you know to some action so don't entertain that you know don't don't actually nurture that seed okay so that is fine okay in the present we are alert we we do that okay and also you know matthew chapter 7 uh the lord jesus is talking about identifying false prophets and about their about their life right saying uh, a good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit so it depends on what kinds of seed is sown it kind of depends on what kind where the roots are right so um, so that's that's the thing and by their fruits you will know them so that we can do in the present but what about some seeds that were already sown in the past like in the sense um these were some things that even before you you know came to christ um these were some things that were already there in your life okay um and you know it was part of your life it was part of your lifestyle it was part of your life um that also you know we need to be aware of saying okay this is what i used to do and i know that it's it, if i leave that unchecked it could lead to you know, what we see in galatians 5 19 20 21 so uh, even though you know i i was not a believer i wasn't aware of this truth it happened in the past so i need to be you know equally or doubly careful uh, about these things right okay um okay hebrews 12 um talks about a root okay uh, hebrews 12 14 and uh, 14 to 17 yeah, let's read through first you peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this many become defiled so um and and it goes on to talk about other things but He's talking about the root, you know, something that is causing um, a fruit. Okay. We looked at the seed, and we looked at uh, you know uh, the, the seed causing the fruit to happen. But we see a root here. Okay, so he's saying ensure that no root of bitterness grows up, cause trouble, and affect others. Okay, so the root is. Um, is something that we need to uh, uh, be aware of as well you know what is it so the root talks about what, where is it that we draw our nutrition from where is it that you know when you look at the root system of a plant you now that's what it is it's drawing daily drawing its strength drawing its nutrition uh, from you know through the root system and also the root system uh, stabilizes the plant right it just establishes the plant and makes firm right so um so some of these roots are very very strong and right? this go deep into the ground so the, the it's it's almost impossible to pull it up uh, to pull up or uproot the plant because the roots are so so strong right so in matthew 3 when 
John the Baptist was talking or introducing uh, the Lord Jesus, he talks about this is what he would do. Okay, um, he says, "I indi indeed baptize you with." Uh, oh, sorry, even before that, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I therefore baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And also, uh, in verse 12, his winnowing fan in his hand is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and ga gather his watch, uh, weeds into the barn. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. So referring to the refining, cleansing uh, work of the Holy Spirit, okay. whom the Lord Jesus is ushering in. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right? So, the axe is need to be laid to the root, okay? Because the 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 more we are rooted in the wrong things, uh, and if we just leave it unchecked, right, it is it is causing problems in the emotional realm, it which is leading up to wrong behavior and wrong thought patterns and wrong thought patterns first and then wrong behavior, which is leading to wrong action. Okay, so um, the the root needs to be uh, cut you know, so that it does not affect. So, um, so figuratively, when we're saying you know root, so this is what it is. You know, where are we drawing our strength from? Where are we drawing our you know whatever is keeping us going? Right? And what are we established in? Right? Um, just we need to maybe think about it. What am I established in? Am I established in certain ideas, certain uh, philosophies? Uh, am I am, am am I basing my life on certain things which are which are not the word of God, which is not the truth of the word of God? I, am I uh, is my life rooted in the culture of the day, right? The values of the day, the superstitions of the day. Is my am I rooted in that? You know, do I uh, do my roots go there? So it's um, and uh, when the Holy Spirit enlightens us, when he when he actually you know when we when he exposes these things, it can be um, you know, it can be a surprise to us. You know why am I rooted in these things? You know, oh yes, the problem with my behavior or the problem with some of my thought patterns is because I'm rooted in this. Like my roots are going there, and uh, in other words, these are some lies that I'm believing. These are some lies that I'm holding on to. Okay. So when when the Holy Spirit exposes, when God, the Holy Spirit exposes us, exposes these lies, which are part of our lives, where we are rooted in, um, then these need to be cut. You know, these need to be removed. Okay. Um, so figuratively, we are saying cut, but we are, what we are saying is that these need to end. This, these things need to end. We need to bring these two things to end. These need sh uh, these things should not be part of our life, and they should not be our support system. Right? They they cannot be uh, where we are drawing life from. Okay. So, um, okay. Some of these uh, outcomes are you know about ourselves, where our life just involves around ourselves, um, about our you know uh, about our needs and so on. Um, then also uh, jealousy and pride and lust. Okay, so laying the axe to the root. I think all of us have gone through that uh, in the initial period. Uh, but it's worth you know going and uh, looking at it again. Right? Laying the axe to the root of self, to the root of jealousy, to the root of pride and lust. Okay, uh, you can download this book. So uh, even as we Think about the, think about these things. Okay, the crucifying the flesh, okay, bringing an end to the invitation, the drawing, um, the things of the flesh. Knowing fully well that these are damaging to our uh, our soul, our, our thoughts, our emotions, uh, uh, everything to do with our mind. These actually damage us. You know, we think of maybe some traumatic events. We think of maybe some you know some. Um, some upheavals which cause damage to our souls. 
and we forget that the lust of the flesh actually war and create damage to our soul as well right so um so we need to be mindful of that then we looked at the seeds you know the seeds what are the seeds which were sown earlier what are the seeds that we are sowing you know intentionally in our lives so the seeds cause fruits to happen they bear fruits and uh, you know galatians 5 19 talks about certain fruits of the outcome of the flesh or the work of the flesh uh, whereas we need to be bearing the fruit of the spirit okay to be rooted in the things of the spirit so third thing we looked at was a root right what are we rooted in what are we established in what are we basing our life upon right so uh, so those things so so the thing is that uh, we need to moving forward we need to walk in the spirit live in the spirit and again galatians 5 the entire chapter talks about how we can walk in the spirit and that word walk simply means to order our lives to conduct our lives right to 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 walk in like almost like a, a soldier uh, and it's a military term like a soldier would walk in formation would march in formation uh, without breaking row or rank or file or rank sorry right so to keep in step with the holy spirit to order our lives with the holy spirit so the, so so that's the picture so for our minds you know for us to walk in uh the walk in the spirit or live in the spirit so as prompted by as guided by the holy spirit as invited by you know, as yielded to you know, all these terms that we use right, to the holy spirit so we are called to that kind of a life okay? we are called we are designed for that kind of a life you know, sometimes we think oh am i am i really designed for that and am i designed to live that way uh, the thing is that uh, you know as human beings we we, we we were born in sin so we were cut off from life itself you know, life as in the zoe god kind of life and then we came to christ we came to christ we were born again and for the first time we could actually pray and be heard and uh, hear the voice of god hear or be be sensitive to what god is doing in our lives and we come to a position of being sheep who can hear the voice of the shepherd right so we are we are exposed to the life of god right but the thing is that we are so used to living in the flesh we are so used to living as dictated by the flesh or only you know with our with our reason our mind and so on that uh, for us to live or walk in the spirit that is something that we need to learn again right but if you look at uh, you know how we are designed for the spirit of god to dwell in us and uh, for the spirit to be drawing on the wisdom the life of the you know, life life of jesus so that is what we are designed to be right so this walking in the spirit is what we as uh, children of god this is what we are designed to be now, this is something that is that should be natural for us okay so even as we learn to walk in the spirit and it, it you know there could be some thoughts you know is this even natural you know is this even something that i should be thinking of is it making me weird right um, i'm not like anyone else and uh, you know or like the majority <laughs> like uh, is it is it it's even it's weird right is it weird but the fact is that this is what we are designed to walk as right? as new creation believers right? so um we must walk in the spirit okay galatians 5 25 if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit okay so the walk uh, is not just one step it's a series of steps it's not just a one step and pause but a series of continuous steps right so uh it's it's not i you know it, it's not something that we do as an event and then stop but it's something that we do in union with christ and it's a journey right so galatians 5 16 very important as we walk in this way as you live in this way as you take walk those series of steps in this way the assurance is that you will not 
fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. Again, why are we why are we studying all this? Why are we looking into this, the conquest of the mind, so that we can stay in that place of wholeness. Right? We can stay in that place of emotional health and wholeness. Right? So that it can be part of us. It doesn't have to be something that comes and goes and that we and we constantly fight for. No, it can be part of us, right? Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I just want to add that these lusts of the flesh would damage things of the soul. So you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You will not damage your soul if you walk in the spirit, right? For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish to do, right? Because the flesh is contrary to the spirit. And uh, even though you might have desires, okay, I want to do this, but then the flesh is unwilling, does not less let us. So when we walk in the spirit, when our roots are in the spirit, when we sow to the Holy Spirit, we will reap. Our walk will be that of uh, as ordained, as designed by the Spirit of God. Okay. Um, right. So when we walk in the spirit, so it just goes on to make some of these things visible when we walk in the spirit. We can expect to see the fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit being love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Galatians 5, 22, 23, right? gentleness, self-control. Um, so we can expect to see the fruit of the spirit because the spirit of God is against or is contrary to the uh, things of the flesh. Right? So we can expect to see the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, verse 24 and 25 says, Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, So we produce uh, this kind of fruit. Romans 8, 8 also talks about the same thing. I said, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, if, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Look at verse 10. If Christ in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit gives life to our mortal bodies. Right? That is what we see in verse 11. And uh, if you live according to the flesh, verse 13, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Galatians, I'm oh, sorry, Romans 5.13. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, okay, you bring to an end these draw these desires of the flesh, which means that there is a will involved, there is a decision involved, there is you know uh, our choice involved. Right? So you, if by the Spirit, which means by the leading, empowering, uh, warning of the Holy Spirit, you bring to an end, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And that is nothing but walking in the Spirit. Right? So walking in the Spirit, as, as, we, as exciting as that is, is also putting to death the things of the flesh. Right? And, um, and then this is, this is life. This is life. Even as we, even as the Spirit of God leads us, right? Okay. So uh, Colossians two verses six and seven talks about something that we um, that we consciously need to do. You know, we talked about the root. We talked about where we are established, where we are drawing our strength from, drawing our identity from, and and all that. Colossians two, as you have therefore received Christ. Jesus the Lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving okay rooted and built up in him the amplified bible says have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in him fixed and founded in him so again when we say rooted it's again a figure of speech 
but you know it's referring to something our lives becoming stable okay being rooted in him brings stability to our lives right being established in him brings stability to our emotions right so our roots need to go deep in the person of jesus so what do we mean by that you know it's it's nice to say i'm mean, rooted in him so uh, what do we mean by that practically you know, how do i apply that right so which means that my strength you know the source of my strength the source of my identity the source of my life should be christ our life should be christ right so we uh, there's no plan b you know, there's no you know uh, a different agenda if we want to experience this right? to be rooted and built up in him okay, just read that verse again rooted and built up in him established in the faith abounding in it with thanksgiving right? so um so this is this is an exhortation um for all of us as believers okay uh, let's just look at that uh, the verses prior to that um, okay so colossians 2 and um, yeah so um if you if you look at uh, verse uh, you know, verse 6 is saying, okay, therefore, having received Christ, walk in him. If you look at verse 8, it's talking about um, being swayed by empty deceit or philosophy according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Okay. So this being rooted in him being firmly established in him is very important because um, then we will not be swayed right one thing is walking in him walking in christ is going to definitely put an end to the things of the flesh right you will not fulfill or we will not give in to that invitation okay but also we will not be swayed by empty deceit okay uh, or philosophy of man according to the traditions of men, according to the principles of the world. Now, these are equally, you know, uh, equally important, or we need to be uh, discerning about, because these also sway us. These also uh, take our life in a different direction, okay, slowly and steadily. Um, and so Paul is reminding, you know, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Body. So there's no... No, there's no question of uh, nurturing an, an, another idol. And a, a philosophy can be an idol. Uh, uh, you know, a tradition can be an idol, uh, which is contrary to the word, of course. Right? So he's saying that you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So he's saying you, know, you, you don't have to doubt basing your life on Christ. Because everything flows out of him. You don't have to doubt whether it will be beneficial for us. It will be a blessing for us or not. You know, will, will that result in me somehow not experiencing life in its fullness? No. Because you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Body. Okay, So we don't lose out we don't we are not short changed right? if we base our life on christ who's the fullness of the godhead bodily so let our roots be deep established in christ okay so it's we see that these don't these things don't happen automatically these things don't happen immediately okay i mean it can it can, it just depends. Uh, but these things definitely don't happen automatically, right? There is our intention involved, and there is our 
know, it's not just a one-time thing. It's, there is, um, there are some of us are like, okay, just once, uh, we just gra grab onto it, hold on to the truth, and our mind could be like a, you know, it's like a steel trap, just grasp it, and that's it, you know. But for some of us, you know, we need that reminder. Right? We need that reminder. We need that reminder. And, and it's fine. You know, like how Peter writes and he says, you know, I'm by way of reminder, I'm just writing this to you that you already know this, that you're already walking in the truth, but I want to tell you this. Right. So that is also fine as believers. You know, if we are reminded over, we need to be reminded, that's fine. But the fact is this, that we know that this being established, being rooted, being walk, uh, walking in, in the in, in the spirit um, is, is something that that we need to pursue okay, uh, intentionally. And this is something that we need to walk in daily and it needs to become a part of us. Okay. So um, yeah, we'll we'll stop here, and then we'll talk about um, as as we are talking about rooted in Christ, also severing something, you know, uprooting certain things. Um, let's we we'll look at that in the next class. Okay, so um, yeah, thank you. Have a great weekend. God bless. Bye bye.